Okay, so we're going to look at it, how to calculate a two sample proportion test in Excel. Uh, now, one thing to kind of be aware of, uh, the way that they give information about proportion tests can differ from problem to problem. In this particular example, they gave us information in a table where they gave us the sample size for each group and the category that we're in, the category of the number that we're in the category of interest, the yes group. Um, but sometimes you'll see this same data presented in a two-way table where they have the yeses and the noes for both groups and then a total at the bottom. And so you have to pick out what you need, which, which group do you need, yes or no, and what is the corresponding total. So just be aware that different problems will present the data to you in different ways. Sometimes they'll put it in sort of a problem statement all in words. But uh, it's important to be able to sort of read the problem and figure out, you know, what, what numbers go with which thing. So uh, we're going to look at it this particular example, but be aware that problem statements can be different. And so identifying all the different components is going to be an important um, thing to work on. Now, in this particular problem, Time Magazine supposedly reported the results of a television poll of 800 American adults about uh, whether there should be a federal tax on cigarettes uh, to be raised for healthcare reform. This was from many, 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 many years ago. Um, and so what we have is most people are not smokers. And so most of the people that answered the survey, 605 out of the 800 uh, said uh, they were non-smokers and, they, and 351 of them answered yes. And then of the 195 that said they were smokers, only 41 of them said yes. So what we wanna do is to find out if the two populations, uh, we wanna know if they differ significantly. Um, so what we're going to assert for our null hypothesis is that they don't differ, that they are the same. And then the alternative will be that they do differ. So our null hypothesis is uh, that the proportion of group one is equal to the proportion in group two. And for the alternative, that the proportion in group one is not equal to the proportion in group two. So this will be a two-tailed test. And so that's gonna matter when we go and calculate our probabilities. Now, um, the test statistic that we need is given by this formula and it looks a little complicated. So I wanna break it down just a little bit. Now, uh, P1 is, hat is the estimate of the smoking group from the sample. So that's our non-smokers rather. And then P2 is the smoking group estimated from the sample. Uh, P1 and uh, P10 and P20, these are the, um, how do I want to put this, the null hypothesis values. Now, we don't have a particular null hypothesis. Um, typically, if we claim that these are equal to each other, then both of these numbers are the same, whatever they are. And so this uh, parentheses actually becomes zero. Uh, and so it's often not even included in the problem. But we could hypothesize that there was at least, let's say, a 5% difference between them, and in which case this parentheses would be that difference in the proposed hypothesis. So I left it in the formula just for the sake of completeness, but when we calculate this, we are saying that they're the same as our null hypothesis, and so this parentheses will be zero and it will disappear. In the denominator, the p hat that we're using here is going to be basically, if we take all of these people together, what is the proportion of people that said yes? And then uh, one over N1 is the sample size in group one and one over N2, that the N2 is the sample size in group two. So let's go over to Excel and let's actually do this calculation. All right, so I brought over the, the data and the problem statement so we can look at it and the formula. So let's start by laying out our 
calculations. Um, we're going to say the hypothesized difference. Um, since we don't have a hypothesized difference, we're again, we're concluding, uh, we're supposing that they're actually equal to each other. Um, the P1 estimate is going to be our yes count divided by our sample size count. And P2 is going to be our yes count for the smokers divided by the sample size count here. We are going to need uh, the sample size one by itself for our formula. And we're also going to need the sample size two for our formula. And then we are also going to need um, this p hat. And that, we're going to call this p hat. And that is going to be all of the yeses divided by all of the sample. Okay, so now let's put together, let's, and I'm gonna do this in pieces. Let's put together our standard error formula. Now that's going to be the square root of p hat times one minus p hat times one over n one plus one over n two. That's our denominator. And I want to close with more parentheses. There we go, I think. Let's see, what did it change? Square root, that times that, times that, times, yes. Okay, so that was my parentheses and then it closed another parentheses. Okay, so just to make sure. Um, and this is about the order of magnitude that you would expect. Um, the standard error is going to be most mostly affected by the smaller sample size uh, because one over a smaller number is going to be bigger than one over a larger number. And so a lot of the variability here is going to come from that smaller part of the sample. But that's our standard error. And then we're going to calculate our test statistic, which is a z-score, which is going to be um, P1 minus P2 minus zero. I mean, um, that's our difference, right? And then divided by our standard error. And the fact that this test statistic is so large uh, actually should make sense to us because this is 58% and this is 21%. They are a very, very different from each other, uh, which given the question that was being asked here should not surprise anybody. But now we wanna convert this to a p-value. Now, remember that to calculate the p-value, this is a two-tailed test. So normally we would just calculate, this is a, a uh, the result is a right-tailed result. So we would do one minus the normal distribution, but then because it's two-tailed, we're just calculating the difference. That means we need both tails. How, how, what's the chance that it would be this different in either direction? So it's two times the one minus. So two times one minus norm dot dist. And remember, we have to do it this way because the normal distribution, unlike the uh, T distribution, doesn't have a two-tailed thing for us. So we have to, and it doesn't have a right-tailed thing. So we can only do left-tailed. So that's the norm dot dist part. That's the left tail, everything less than that. But we don't want less than a positive number. We want above the positive number. So one minus that gives us the complement, a small number. And then two times that because we want both tails. And it's basically zero. Um, 
Let's see if we can get some decimal places. Nope. Uh, it's so small that it's basically zero. So this is obviously less than 0 0.05. And again, this should not really be surprising. Um, do smokers want to be taxed more in order to pay for their own health care? Of course they don't. Um, and do non-smokers want to be taxed more, want smokers to be taxed more in order to pay for their own health insurance? Yes, they do. So obviously this is a logical result. And so that makes sense. Um, this is less than 0.05. We reject the null. Remember the null hypothesis here was that the two proportions are equal. And therefore we say there is sufficient evidence to think that um, smokers and non-smokers have different opinions of this policy. And then just so to make sure that we can all read that. There we go. So that's that's our process for calculating the two sample hypothesis test. And we basically it's set up exactly like the one sample test. The only thing is our formula is just a little bit more complicated.